Hey guys, on well, today's video I'm going to try to address the oil problem that I mentioned to you earlier in a previous video. Um, you can see that oil is kind of pulling in this corner and I imagine this is a low spot uh, because I still have my machine on dollies. But I haven't wiped it since that first video that I talked about it and I just wanted to kind of see how much is accumulating. And you can see it's quite a bit. Now some of this oil I think is from when I was setting up the mill, it's coming, it's pushing itself off the ways. So I can understand that. There's not much we can do about that. The rest of it I think was coming, is coming from the Y-axis ball nut. And whatever oil's in that line, it's just because that's the lowest spot, it's draining to the ball nut and then somehow dripping out of the ball nut. Either that or I had a hole somewhere, but I think it's just, I haven't checked the hose. I'm going to check it, but I think it's just leaking out. So I purchased some of these check valves and I thought, well, that'll solve the problem. I'll just stick this in line and then any oil that gets past the check valve will go out to the ways or the ball screws if it drains out and I can put it close so there's not that much or and then I don't have to worry about the oil in the line seeping out so I thought great well now those things right there were like seven dollars a piece and then I got them and I can blow through both ends so I was I hooked up I hooked it up to some hose in that direction I can blow through it and in the other direction I can blow through it so I'm a little puzzled I don't know how they work um, is it pressure I don't know so either a I got faulty check valves or this is not going to work for the application that I want so I just decided to heck with it I'll just make my own and so that's what I intend to do so let's go take a look so I took a look around the shop to see what I had on hand and this is what I came up with I've got just your regular ballpoint pen and what I did was I took the spring out of it now these are very light springs and then I took a BB these are uh, 1.177 inch balls like so and I've got some 3 8 inch bar stock you can go with half inch or you could use round or hex this is hex and then here are my four millimeter push to connect fittings so what I'm going to do is if you can imagine how this is going to go inside that bar stock what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut me a length of bar stock screw them into it like so and in between I'm going to have the spring and the ball and the ball will seat up against the fitting like so and then when fluid gets pushed in it'll release let the fluid go around and then when there's no more pressure it'll go back into place so now that is the concept and so to see it a little better I drew it up in Fusion 360 so let's take a look alright so here we are in Fusion 360 and this is the check valve that I came up with. Now, depending on what size tubing you're going to use, you'll have different sizes. This is four millimeter tube for mine. So you may have, if you're using eighth inch tubing, then you'll have, of course, different size. But you can kind of get the general idea of how I made these check valves. So let's go through the different components. Um, the first thing we have is the ball. Uh, these are BB's 0.177 inch. 
and then I just took the spring out of a you know a ballpoint pen uh, these are 1.57 inch diameter and I'll probably end up cutting it in half and just using half the string uh, spring uh, next we have our hex rod and you can see the spring and the ball inside there um, got an M6 thread on each end and then we have our two fittings that screw in there okay and you can see that the spring just seats up against the fitting there and then as fluid goes in it'll push the ball back and allow the oil to go around and through the other side pretty straightforward pretty simple but I think it's going to be real effective for the keeping the oil from just seeping out of the uh, lines so there's our oiler check valve and I'll do a separate video and show you how I drew all this up but let's get back out and we'll start working on our check valves alright so the first thing I want to do is take it out to the mini lathe here and I'm going to face the end of the uh, 3 8 inch hex stock here uh, then I'm going to center drill for our through hole now the through hole uh, for my particular push to, uh, check valves is 11 64ths I'm using 8 inch diameter springs and a 8 inch ball so uh, drill all the way through and this is about uh, 7 eighths of an inch long uh, center section here uh, now I'm coming back with a 7 32nd drill bit and this is for our M6 uh, threads and I'm going a quarter inch deep here now I've got my M6 by one tap. I'm just threading it. And then we just need to clean it up and check for fit here. Seems to be good. And now I flipped it around and I'm just reversing doing the other side. Now I'm working on the push to connect fittings. The first thing I want to do is put a chamfer on the end of it. I'm using a quarter inch drill bit. This is so the ball and the spring will have a a guide to go into the channel here. Um, the center channel for the ball, the pocket, needs to be 0.127 inch so the ball will just slide into place. And then I'm going to follow up with a eighth inch ball mill just to give me a seat for that ball. And that should give me a tight seal. And you can see when the ball's in there, it's flush and it just slides in and out uh, pretty easily. All right, well, I got all the parts made for the check valves. So now we just need to do some assembly. I've got my two push to connect fittings. This one I did not have to do any modifications. And this one, as you saw in the video, uh, we made some uh, modifications for the ball to fit in. So the ball just fits down in there like that. Uh, you want to make sure that it goes down and that it freely moves. Like so. And when the ball's in there, it should be kind of flush with the bottom there. So then we just take our rod here, screw it on. Like so. The ball's in there. Alright, and then we just drop the spring. Now this spring, when you put the spring in here, I made the length of this center section the exact close to the height for the spring so that it gives me just the right amount of pressure. And that's pretty much it. And we just want to check it. like so 
He should go down. He should be able to get the ball to go down about a quarter inch. It's kind of hard because you're pushing on something that's round, so the rod wants to kind of move on you, but should go like that. And then, you know, you shouldn't be able to blow through it. But this way you should be able to not blow through it because it's pretty stiff spring, but but the oil will go through. So that's pretty much uh, how they're getting assembled. And I'll need, I think I need three. And like I said, I'm using four millimeter tube. You may use, go with quarter inch. And if you do, then you can use uh, just a BB really. And, and a spring from a ballpoint pen. The only reason I, that originally that's what I had intended to do was use um, that setup. However, I decided to go with four millimeter uh, tubing. Uh, let me see, do I have it? Anyways, the four millimeter tubing is very light and I didn't want to, it's very small tubing. Uh, it's and I didn't want to um, have a big spring or a big hole here, so I went with the. I just went with smaller, a smaller bearing and a smaller spring. But they go together pretty quick, and uh, work pretty good. They go in about a quarter inch or so, just enough room to let the. Uh, liquid get around there, the oil get around there, but pretty, uh, it needs to go back down in there and seat. So, it took me a minute to kind of figure this out. Originally, I thought I could just have it sit like that, as I showed you in our drawing, but those did not seal and they did leak. So, I had to come back and rework it and modify it so that the bearing will drop down in there and having the uh, rounded seat the same as a the one uh, eighth inch ball I think made the difference by using the uh, ball end mill to make that seat in the bottom so that turned out really well pretty pleased with them so let's go out to the mill and then we'll see exactly how these things work Okay, so I basically I disconnected my manifold there because I was just wasting a lot of oil playing around with this and trying to figure it out. Oil was getting pretty much everywhere. So what I did was I just plugged everything up best I could and then I'm only just really coming down this piece of four inch, uh, four millimeter tubing into a measuring cup. Now, I've had this one sitting here for about three hours, and it hasn't any of it, none of the, none of the oil has uh, passed through it. So that's a good sign. I'm going to leave it sit overnight, but I just wanted to um, go ahead and get this on video of how it works. So when I pump... You can see the oil comes out. And then that's it. So now I know the check valve works. I'm going to leave it sit like this. I'm going to wipe this out and I'll leave it sit overnight. And uh, I'll come back tomorrow and check it and make sure that there's no oil in there. And if so, uh, I think that's going to do the trick because what was happening was it was all bleeding down it was bleeding these lines you can see how these lines are empty and it was just running to wherever the lowest point was which happened to be uh, this particular line right here which is my y-axis ball nut and this is my first attempt 
and I didn't have the bearing seated in there like I just showed you and so it it did still leak a little bit uh, not quite as bad but it still leaks so I had to go back and kind of change it up and it took a few uh, attempts to about three attempts to get it just the way I wanted it and to work properly but hey it works now so I'm pretty uh, pretty excited and happy about that I'm gonna sit, let this sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow if everything's clean I can hook all this back up and install my check valve all right well you can see how they work I'm really uh, happy that I got these working um, you can get 10 of these for like $4 um, the flat 3 8 inch bar is not that much. I got a hundred springs for seven dollars and You can get a hundred of these balls for about four dollars So total I've probably got Of course, you know you can make more total I've probably got about twenty dollars and these Check valves here that I could not get to work were $6.99 a piece. And uh, I really think that the ones I made are a lot better than these. So if you want to try to attempt to do these, now like I said, you could go with some uh, three quarter inch or half inch hex, uh, some .177 diameter BBs and the spring from a ballpoint pen if you're using uh, m 8 thread or quarter inch tubing that would be I think that would be great for that and you can probably scrounge up the parts to do that uh, and not cost you anything to make them all right well it's been about 24 hours and everything looks to be pretty good the oil still in the line uh, there's not any oil in the Pyrex uh, dish here. This fitting here seems to be working okay. So I think for the most part, this is going to solve most of my problem. I do think that there is a possibility that these check valves, these ball valves could get stuck at some point in time with trash or something. Uh, and I guess we'll just have to deal with that. But it will, I think it will prevent a lot of the oil just draining out. So that's going to wrap up this video. I'm going to get these installed and we'll be in uh, good shape. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.